and welcome, I'm your Kudnaki. So NT has just released version 6.3. This is the latest LTS version, so this is the version that you should be using going forward. And on this version, if you set your project to use the input manager, you get this warning. It is saying this project uses input manager, which is marked for deprecation. So to manage input in your project, use the input system package instead. So technically you can still use it during the 6.3 upgrade cycle, but it is marked for deprecation in the future. So over here in this video, let's learn how to upgrade from the input manager into the input system. Which thankfully, honestly, nowadays it is pretty easy. Previously, the input system used to be quite complex. So for simplicity's sake, usually you do want to use the input manager. You can see all the complex stuff you can do with it in my fully detailed tutorial. But thankfully, over the years, the Unity team, they've worked on making the new input system pretty much just as simple to use as the legacy input manager. So here, let's learn how to convert the most common actions. And here in this cheat sheet, you can already see how they pretty much all have the exact same equivalent. Now, before I show you how to do this upgrade, just keep in mind how the main purpose of the input system is to use the input actions and all of those things that layer of abstraction that makes it super powerful. So for all of that, check out the fully detailed tutorial. But when you're just prototyping your games, when you just want to get started quickly, then over here, these little shorthands, these are super useful. So over here, I'm going to be covering these nice shorthands that match up perfectly with the input manager. But of course, when making your games, when making the final games, when it's something more than a prototype, then at that point, definitely make sure you use the full power of the input system. As a demo, I'm going to be using my own camera system tutorial. So here it is, I can pan around, I can rotate, I can zoom in and out. So basically I'm testing for key inputs, I'm testing for the mouse scroll wheel and I'm testing for mouse movement on the edges. So over here, let's upgrade this code. So first thing, the input system is still in package, so we need to install it. So just go to window, package management, open the package manager. Now over here, scroll down to find the input system package. There it is, go ahead and install this. So first of all, something very common, let's just ask for a button pressed, which on the legacy input manager, we use this input.kitekey and then the key code for the key that we want. So this one returns true for as long as we are holding down the button. And the equivalent in the input system is, first of all, we need to add the using statement. So it's using, it's inside unity engine dot the input system. So yep, that's the namespace. And then over here, the equivalent for this one, we access the keyboard class. So this is the class that exists inside the input system. And then we access the current. So this has to do with the fact of how the input system can support multiple connected keyboards, multiple connected mice and so on. But again, over here, I'm covering the code just for testing. And in testing, usually you just have one keyboard. So that is why this is the equivalent one. And then within that keyboard, then you just check for the key. So in this case, testing for double key. So double key. And then we basically have three options we can do. So we can do was presses frame. And over here in my cheat sheet, you can see exactly what that one is the equivalent. So if you have input key down, use the key that was presses frame. Then if we have get key up, which is triggered true whenever we release the key, that's was released on this frame. And if you want just one that is true for as long as the button is held down, if so, then it's really just is pressed. So over here in this case, we do have get key. So we do use is pressed just like this. So just replace that one and do the same thing for all the other ones, the A and the D as well. And if there I go, we've updated that one. If I save and over here I test, and if there I go, movement still works. Next up here for the edge scrolling mechanic, this one basically uses the mouse position to test if the mouse is at the edge of the screen. And if so, over here we are using input.mouse position. So for this one, the equivalent in the new one is previously we saw how we have the keyboard class and the other class that we have is the mouse class. Again, this one also exists inside Unity input system. And this one, again, same thing, we access the current selected mouse. And in this case for the position, there's a position field. And this one is actually of type vector2 control. So on that one, then we access the value and we get the actual vector2 value. In this case, I want to check the position.x. So there you go, convert that one into that one like this. So that's the x and this one right here is the y. This one is the X again, and then the Y again. So yep, just like this, let's test. So here we are, and if I put the mouse near the edge, yep, there you go, it does move. Okay, great. Next up here, we have testing for the mouse button clicks. In this case, testing for when the right mouse button is pressed down, when the right mouse button is lifted up. So over here, we use the mouse class. Then we go again inside the current mouse. In this case, we're using one, so we're trying to access the right mouse button. So over here, we use the right button. And then over here, we're using get mouse button down. So again, in this case, we have the same things for the mouse. We have was pressed, was released, and is pressed. So in this case, we want the was pressed. So was pressed is frame. Yep, there you go. So this is the equivalent. And same thing over here. So this one is the release. So was released as frame. And if like this, now I should be able to press and release the right mouse button. So here I am. If I right click, yep, there you go. I'm dragging, let go. And there you go. Back to normal. Okay, great. And then another common thing you might do is using the mouse scroll delta. This one basically checks if the scroll wheel is moving up or down. So for this one, the equivalent is again inside the mouse class. We access the current, then we access the scroll, and then we grab the actual value. This is going to be a vector two. So in this case, we're testing for the y. So there you go, just one like this. So there you go, not like this should work. So here, if I scroll, there you go, I can zoom in and zoom out. All right, great. So if we've already seen how to convert, get a key down, get a key up, and get key. Then by the way, just another curious one, which is how you can access the current and you can access it using a key. 
And by key, I mean an index on the array, and that one can be of type key. So for example, if you store some kind of key code previously in some kind of variable, then this would be the equivalent. You store the key type, which exists inside the input system namespace, and then just access it as an index on the current. And that's another way you can access some key. Then we also saw the get mouse button down. We saw for the mouse position and for the mouse scroll. Then for another interesting one, sometimes you might use this. You might use input.getAccessRaw. This would basically return the delta for the mouse position. And for that, the equivalent is just like this. So you go inside the mouse class, access the current, access the delta, and read that value. Alternatively, something else you might also do is do a get access raw for vertical or horizontal. And by default on the input manager, that would be something like WASD in order to get the vertical and the horizontal axis. And for this one, the equivalent is either you can create the proper action and then you can define the keys for the various axes. Or if you want to do it all through code, again, just for testing, just for timing. If so, it can literally just do what we did up here. So check if a single key was pressed, check for the double key, the S key. So just like we did, do that in order to get basically the equivalent of the get access wrong. And the final very important thing is the on mouse enter all these kind of functions. So by default, you've got all these kinds of functions. So these exist inside the mono behavior itself. So for example, on mouse enter, and this one over here, we can do a log. And I've attached this script to this giant cube. And if I mouse over, yep, there I go. I've got a nice message on the console. However, this over here, this is using the input manager. So if you set your project to only use the input system, if so, then this message will not work. These functions will not be fired. You can read about this on documentation. So basically, if we are using the input system, that one does not support this combat. So for all these events, the equivalent is to use these interfaces. For example, I pointer enter. So over here, we can go ahead and implement those interfaces. So I pointer, and we have a whole bunch of them. So you've got I pointer click, I pointer down, I pointer enter. So in this case, the equivalent for on mouse enter would be this one, I pointer enter. And this one over here, we can implement this interface. And it's just like this. And over here, let's do the button log. However, just like this, if I mouse over, and nope, it still doesn't work. In order to make this work, you need one extra step. You basically need to go onto your main camera. And over here, you need to add a component. And you need to look for a physics recaster. And depending on whether you're using 3D physics or 2D physics, you use one or the other one. So in this case, this cube is using 3D physics. So I'm going to be using this one. And secondly, the way this works is actually with the event system. So we need to make sure we have an event system on scene. So if you don't have one, you can really just create a brand new canvas and that will automatically create an event system. And now if you do have an event system and if the camera does have that nice component and you hit on play, and now if I mouse over, if there you go, now I do see both those events. But remember, you need to make sure to add that component to the camera and you need to make sure you have an event system, otherwise these functions will not be toggled. So yep, this is the cheat sheet for how to convert from the input manager onto the input system. As you can see, thankfully nowadays the input system is super easy to use. That's why nowadays, even when I'm making a quick prototype, I now tend to use the input system. I pretty much never use the input manager. And if you want to learn how to make games, then check out my free complete courses. If you want to learn the super valuable C Sharp language itself, then check out my free C Sharp course. It covers everything from the language from beginner to advanced. Or if you prefer learning how to make a game itself, you can watch my free Catch and Chaos course. That one will teach you how to make a really awesome 3D game. Or alternatively, I just recently released my free Learner Lander 2D course. So this is a great beginner 2D course. Alternatively, for multiplayer, you can check out my free course on making a simple multiplayer game. Or if you're more advanced, then check out my DOTS course. This is definitely very advanced stuff, but if you are an intermediate user, then DOTS is an insanely powerful tool that I really think you should know. So yep, check out all of those with the link in the description. Alright, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.